Hi, I'm Steve Volk, Executive Director of the Shelby American Collection in Boulder, Colorado. And we're gonna talk about the FIA Cobra Roadsters. And the one we have here is uh, serial number CSX 2345. Shelby American built five FIA Cobra Roadsters for the 1964 and 1965 season. Uh, many of these cars, or the bulk of these cars, went to Europe. This particular one uh, is the most significant of the five, because th uh, three were basically destroyed in racing. Two exist today. Uh, this one, CSX 2345 and CSX 2323. This car is unique for a number of reasons. First of all, it survived the 1964 and 1965 season without any uh, mishaps. It, it, it blew it a rear tire at one point and damaged the rear fender, but other than that, it uh, got through the season, both seasons, unscathed. The other unique thing about this particular Cobra is that it has five first place FIA wins. And it was driven by Bob Bondurant, uh, Phil Hill, Roy Salvadori, Sir John Whitmore, Jack Sears, Joachim Nearsposh. I mean, everybody drove it. It was under, uh, Shelby gave the, the team in 64 and 65 to Alan Mann uh, Racing. So he was in charge of the Cobra effort uh, to win the World Manufacturers Championship in 1965. And uh, this car, this FIA Cobra Roadster and the Daytona Coupe uh, sitting next to it, uh, CSX 2299, actually won uh, almost 60% of the points for the 1965 championship season. So what was unique about uh, the FIA Cobra Roadsters? Well, uh, a few things I'd like to point out. They were uh, 289, uh, Weber carbureted cars, and we can take a look at the engine here, which is really interesting. And again, this car is completely unrestored. This is exactly how it finished the last race of the season uh, with Bondurant driving. He won Rossfeld the hill climb. And these are actually the, the tires that he uh, won that hill climb on. But if you look, uh, under the hood, you can see it's a 289 Weber carbureted, uh, probably put out about uh, 385 horse in the day. You'll also notice that uh, if we look closely under the hood, that the car is uh, underneath is actually a Viking blue because the team colors in 64 were Viking blue. This car was in Europe uh, under uh, Alan Mann's uh, direction and supervision. You know, he, he had the whole team uh, in 64 and 65. And he was instructed to repaint the cars, respray the cars, uh, what they called Ford Blue, which we call Guardsman Blue. And so this was Alan Mann's interpretation uh, of the uh, Guardsman Blue. But he didn't do a really great job. You notice uh, you can still see the Viking blue under the hood. Also uh, of interest is that the English mechanics were not that familiar with the Ford V8. And they wrote the firing order uh, of the engine in yellow chalk uh, underneath the hood. And that uh, survives today. So. What else was unique about the FIA Cobra Roadsters? Well, they had to run a full windshield, uh, but the guys cheated a little bit. They actually slotted the windshield mount. And after, you know, they'd go through uh, race scrutiny with the FIA uh, with the windshield in the upright position. And then as soon as the race would start, they'd grab the windshield and pull it down to make it more aerodynamic. You'll also notice that the, the FIA required a speedometer. So they stuck a speedometer in the, in the vehicle 
It's on the right hand side. Uh, it's on the, the passenger side. It's not even hooked up. You now it shows one mile on it. So you, you can see the labels on the dash because uh, they had to label the functions of the switches because a lot of the uh, English drivers like Sir John Whitmore, who actually won the tourist trophy uh, in Oldham Park in this car, uh, uh, you know, weren't that familiar with the controls on a Cobra. Uh, the other thing that you'll notice, which is uh, very interesting, is that in 65, the English drivers, uh, specifically Sir John Whitmore, he had the guys cut off the forward brace on the roll bar because he felt it got in his way. I mean, that's hard to imagine today that, uh, you know, this car is capable of speeds in the 185 mile an hour range that you would defeat uh, the roll bar just to make the car more drivable for you. I mean, it, it, it uh, kind of renders the roll bar uh, not, not very effective. But in any case, that was done. Uh, the car has two uh, gas tanks in it uh, and holds about 42 gallons of fuel. And then back here on the trunk, you'll notice that one of the requirements, the FIA requirements, was that their suitcase fit in the trunk. And uh, what the guys found when they went to Europe is that the suitcase, FIA suitcase, wouldn't fit. You couldn't close the trunk. So they, they actually had to hammer out, you know, these, this is uh, an uh, aluminum body car, uh, hand formed, and they had to hammer out the trunk so that they could actually close the trunk uh, with the FIA suitcase inside. And then uh, they would also wrap bungee cords around uh, and hook them in these little uh, holes here because some of the European tracks, like this car ran at the Targa Furio and the Nürburgring, you know, they were uh, long tracks and they were very bumpy. And what they found with the Cobras is that it would, the, the trunk would work loose. So they put a bungee cord to secure it. The other uh, attributes, uh, they had to run the manufacturer's plate and Shelby's designated, uh, you know, California manufacturer's plate was 013. So this has the original plate on it and then also had to have a designation that it was a uh, entry from the United States. So very interesting car. Uh, it, it's amazing that it has survived intact and has never been restored. Uh, again, even down to the tires, that uh, these are the tires that Bob Bondurant won Rossfeld Germany hill climb uh, in 1965, you know, one of the last races of the season. The car also was invited to be shown at Pebble Beach in 2012, and it won uh, first in class at the Pebble Beach Concours de Elegance, and then it won overall at Pebble Beach uh, for post-war preservation status. So it's a very interesting piece. It's the only factory team car, uh, well, uh, that is totally unrestored in, in its original condition. So in addition to all the guys that drove it, the fact that it survived the 64 season and the 65 season, it is a time capsule. Uh, and it is a, an amazing piece and we're very fortunate to have it uh, here in the museum on display. Okay, we're gonna uh, fire, give this guy a, a try and see if we can get this to fire up for us. You know, this has the original engine in it. Um, and I'm gonna start the pumps. So get some fuel pressure. <laughs> 